I really wasn't planning on doing a third part to this video. But these bottom ones are different than the rest. So, if anybody actually was interested in the first two, they'll probably want to see this part. I sure hope the camera's on this. That's one thing with the head strap. It's meant to be used on a GoPro. And with the GoPro, you got the wide angle, so it kind of helps to ensure that whatever you're looking at is actually in the photo. But I have a lot of reasons that I don't like the GoPro. Ah, now this thing is so just just crapped out. It's just half halfway here, half halfway gone. My brain's halfway gone. I don't even remember what I was saying half the time. <laughs> Feels like I've been working on these for a month. It has been two weeks. So, anyways, yeah, we're gonna um, take this off, which is gonna be fun if it's anything like the other four bottom <coughs> lower ones were. Now, these are actually running off of two wires, so these ones will work exactly as designed with the lights that I got. Unlike the other ones where the ground is made by contacting the body. Did you see how rusted that is? I hope the focus is good. So anyways, this stuff is so old, you can't even break it off in one piece. It just, and they put some serious glue of some sort, silicone, rubber, adhesive, something on there that really keeps this from wanting to come off. my hand up on this. No, I shouldn't. I did fine on the other three. But then again, the other three, I wasn't wasn't trying to worry about a camera at the same time either, huh? I'm just going to try to dig all of this old crap out of here. That looks like mold, which is not... No, that's not mold. That's just sawdust on the wires. And now we're going to get in here and separate these two and cut them. And then as you see, there's like no wire sticking out. We'll deal with that in a second. These wires right in front of us here are the other side of the wire from that um, clearance light. We're going to have to unhook it where it's tacked on and pull it down to give us a little bit of slack so that we can pull it through. Then we're going to connect the wires off of the clearance lights into that and push it all back through to this side and then tuck it up nice and neat. But this is just one more little inconvenience. You know, there's always always a problem with anything you want to do. Um, well, and look at them Black Widow webs. I better get my hands out of here, not keep them in here any longer than necessary. Okay, I've pulled the wire through from the other side after connecting them. Um, because, like I said, this doesn't ground the body. It has an actual dedicated hot and ground wire like these lights are made for. I had to make sure that I connected them to the correct one. That's why it's on. Um, next step is to fill in this big gap, assuming I have enough of this lap sealant left. I've still got four more of these I gotta do on the top also. So who knows, I may have to go down and buy some real silicone before this is all said and done anyway. 
Um, I'll put just a bead on each of those and then kind of mash it in with my fingers. Make sure it goes in the hole. This one should be fine. Okay, again, I hope this is angled right. It wouldn't be the first time I screwed that up. So, this part is pretty, <laughs> pretty self-explanatory. You screw the things in. So yeah, I'm pretty sure all of the clearance lights I bought are supposed to be the bottom side. I think that's standard for the bottom sides to have two wires and all the top ones to have a single hot wire and ground to the frame. That may be different on some of the newer motorhomes, but it seems like what I've seen on most of the older ones I've had. Um, that's why these down here mounted so easily. I didn't have to put any sealant on the outside. I didn't have to mold any butyl tape or put any die core out here. Just a little bit in the center hole and the holes for the old screws. And it's all um, nice and flush and yeah, it worked out real well. Plus it was easier to get to. I didn't have to stand there with my hands above my head. I'm actually able to sit in a chair and, and do this, you know, without being at a screwed up angle. Um, I think that's what made the ones on the back come out so horrible, horribly crooked is um, uh, I have that that rack hanging out off the um, tow hitch and so I couldn't get the ladder right up against it so I was having to hang way out and over and it was just, just a real pain in the ass but I'm real happy with all how all of these came out on the bottom. Um, like I said, they're nice and flush and everything's sealed. So yeah, do whatever you want. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. And make it work. And with any motorhome, old or new, as soon as you fix one problem, you find another. Up here, there's a little pin that's busted. It's supposed to keep it set back in there nice and tight. Something happened and that broke off. Pretty sure the hinge isn't going anywhere. It's not only held in by the bottom pin, but it's held in by the inner workings of the locking mechanism itself. I don't believe I can fix that. Um, I certainly can't replace just this piece. However, I may be able to replace the entire locking mechanism, uh, which is going to be kind of tricky because it's got two of these plates that have to, one on this side of the door and the other on the frame side, and they have to line up together. That's what gives it extra security. Um, I don't even know if they make that design anymore, so I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what I'll do there. I'm just gonna use it, unless it gets really bad, then I'll see about replacing the whole thing, I guess. 